you struggle with sleep. I'm someone that almost my entire life, I've struggled with sleep habits and gotten terrible sleep for the majority of my life. I grew up in a household where sleep habits were terrible. <laughs> Everyone in my family uh, went to sleep really late, slept in just to get the amount of sleep on weekends, like catching up on the weekends, stuff like that. Just terrible sleep habits. And I've gone from that sleeping terribly, probably averaging five to six hours of sleep my entire life, if you kind of averaged it out, to now sleeping consistent eight hours a night, every single night of consistent sleep. And I'm going to share with you my journey, what I've learned along the way to improve my sleep. So if you do struggle with sleep, listen to this. I promise you that you're going to come out with some really practical tips. So listen to everything I say in this podcast, um, put it into action right away. And I promise you, your sleep is going to improve. So let's get right into it. And again, uh, welcome to Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Cade Junker. I own Fitness Junkie Training. Well, let's get right into it, guys. So sleep, I already told you my story. Now, the number one tip that I have for you, and I've posted this on social media, but I call it the 10 3 2, 1 rule. Okay, so 10 3 2, 1. And the 10 stands for 10 hours before bed, you want to stop consuming caffeine. Okay, 10 hours before bed, stop consuming your caffeine for the day. Um, studies show and research shows that even, you know, I've heard people say they're like, I can still fall asleep. I can drink a whole bang energy drink and fall right to sleep. And caffeine doesn't hit me like that. Well, the thing is your quality of sleep is still a hundred percent taking a hit. I promise you. Okay. So even if you're someone that can drink caffeine and get right to bed, close to bedtime, your quality of sleep is being impacted. So make sure 10 hours before bed, bare minimum, 10 hours, stop consuming caffeine. This is going to help your sleep a whole lot. All right. So that's the 10. So 10, three, two, one, three is three hours before bed. Stop eating and stop drinking water. I used to just say stop eating, but also drinking water can affect your sleep as well too close to bedtime. Okay. It can cause you to also wake up during the night and have to pee too many times, right? So 10, three, two, one, the three is stopping eating and stopping drinking three hours before bed. Um, this is going to help your digestion. It's going to be better for you for falling asleep. Okay. The two in the 10, three, two, one is two hours before bed. You're going to want to stop working. Okay. Try to shut yourself off from work two hours before bed. This is going to help you get to sleep. You're not going to be thinking about all of the anxiety of work, all those thoughts running through your head. So two hours before before bed, try to start winding down and try to shut off the work. Okay, one hour before bed. So 10, three, two, one, the one is no screens. One hour before bed, try to put your phone in another room. That's another hack. That's a, something I've talked about in the past as well. You know, put your phone actually in the bathroom is what I do. So that not only are, does it cause you to not look at your phone before you go to bed, but also it causes you to have to get up and go into the bathroom, go to a completely separate room when your alarm's going off in the morning. By the time you're in there, you know, you're, you're already up. It's like, okay, well, I'm up time to time to get after the day. Right. So it's just an extra obstacle that gets you up. And it's an extra barrier between you and your phone um, so that you're not on your phone um, right before you go to sleep because it is a stimulant. Screens are a stimulant. You know, things that you're looking at, you're getting dopamine hits. It's causing you to, to stay up. Um, so yeah, one hour before bed, shut off the screens. Okay, cool. So that's the 10, three, two, one rule. That alone, guys, if you can follow that, that's gonna be a game changer for you. Um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is caffeine and supplements. So I talked about caffeine, you know, shutting it off. Let's also talk about dosage and types of caffeine you want to consume. So I've talked about this in another video. I've made a complete caffeine video. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's earlier on in my channel, but go check out the caffeine video I did. Um, I go really deep into what caffeine actually does, everything like that. So if you want to really deep dive into caffeine, go check that out. But to touch on a few things, you want to consume either coffee or tea uh, to get natural sources. I used to be someone that drank a lot of energy drinks, took a lot of pre-workout. I pretty much shut myself off of those completely. And I just get natural sources of caffeine from coffee. 
also espresso and tea. Okay. I do drink a decent amount of caffeine. I'll be honest with you. Um, but what I do is I front load it early on in the day. Well, you actually want to wait um, 90 to 120 minutes to, to maximize your caffeine and not get uh, a huge cortisol spike. Um, so it's better for your stress, better for your hormones if you wait a little bit in the morning. So 90 minutes to 120 minutes, then consume your caffeine, but then you want to shut it off. Like I said, at least 10 hours before bed. Okay, so that's how you're going to get the most out of your caffeine. And dosage wise, you want to be somewhere between, depending on your size, your gender, your tolerance to caffeine, you want to be somewhere between um, 100 to 300 milligrams of caffeine. That's where I kind of stick between. Um, so right now, I would say, and it has to do also because I'm cutting and, you know, just when the calories are low, sometimes it helps to have a little bit of caffeine to get you through <laughs> and everything. But right now I'm closer to probably 300, 400 milligrams a day, to be honest with you. But that's like the max, max that I, that I usually go. Okay. So, so somewhere between 100 to 300 milligrams is kind of the sweet spot where you're going to get a good, a lot of those positive effects without the negative effects. All right. So that's some of the things on caffeine. If again, if you want a deeper dive into caffeine, check out my older video that I made completely on caffeine, go check that out. Now let's talk about melatonin because this is a big one as well for sleep. And I think melatonin gets a bad rap. Um, a lot of people say, you know, anecdotally that it will have you be drowsy. Now the thing with melatonin is if you just go into the store and, and buy some tablets, melatonin, usually they're going to be dosages around five to 10 milligrams in those bottles. And this is way too much. Okay. Your body actually naturally produces melatonin, but the amount that your body produces is like 0.25 milligrams of melatonin. So it's a very small amount that we naturally produce. So when we're taking five milligrams, 10 milligrams of melatonin, we're, we're taking literally, you know, 20, 30 times plus the amount of melatonin that our body naturally produces. Okay. So the amount that you actually want to be taking to, to get yourself to, to fall asleep a little bit better, which is what I do. And I take it every single night is like half a milligram. Okay. So you, you'll want to either buy the gummy melatonins and just kind of take little bites of it before you go to sleep, or you can get the one milligram tablets, maybe chop them in half. Sometimes I, I even do less than half. And it's just going to be that little bit of extra melatonin that gets you sleepy for the night. You want to take it about two hours before bed for it to kick in. You start feeling sleepy and you get ready to go to sleep. That's what I do every single night. It's helped me a lot. Um, and I don't get those negative effects. Okay. The thing with melatonin too, to take into consideration though, is that melatonin helps you fall asleep doesn't necessarily help you stay asleep. Okay. So it will help you get to sleep, which is what I use it for, but just know that it's not, not something that helps you if you are someone that wakes up a lot during the night. Okay. That's melatonin is not necessarily going to help you with that. Okay. But it will help you stay, get to sleep. Okay. Now let's move on. Chronotypes. This is something I've recently gotten more into and learned more about, and this is not something I've talked about much. And this is a really interesting topic to me. So chronotypes is talking about what your natural sleep patterns is. And there's even this book called The Power of When. Um, the Power of When, I would look into this. All right. And it's it's talking about not only your sleep patterns, not, not only figuring out your natural sleep patterns, but also like when you're most productive throughout the day, when you should prioritize working out, when you should prioritize getting like creative work done, busy work done, things like that. Really interesting stuff, really interesting topic. But chronotypes, you can actually take something called a chronotype quiz. And what this does, you can search this, just search, you know, Google search chronotype quiz. Something will pop up um, and you can take this quiz. It's going to tell you what your natural sleep patterns are, um, depending on what you answer in the quiz. Okay, so it's going to categorize you in either, I think it's a bear. So it gives you like a, an animal chronotype. So you're either a bear, a lion, I think it's a wolf and a dolphin. Um, and it's going to categorize you into one of these chronotypes. And it's going to tell you when your natural sleep patterns are. So this was really interesting and game changing for me because I was someone, you know, just coming from the fitness industry 
you know, a lot of times it's like grind culture and it's like wake up at 4 35 AM, you know? So I, I was like trying to force myself to wake up super early. Um, come to find out I'm actually the bear chronotype and my natural sleep patterns are sundown to sun up, which is like around like 8 9 PM, which I don't go to sleep that early. I usually go to sleep, you know, around 10 o'clock. Um, but around that time, and then when the sun comes up around seven. Um, so what I do, I, my usual sleep pattern is like around 10 PM getting up around six, six 30. Okay. So that's my, my sleep pattern now. And it works for me a lot better than when I was trying to force myself to wake up super early, four 35 PM, 5 AM. Right. So it's really interesting to figure out your natural sleep patterns, what you're just kind of naturally um, supposed to, or not, not supposedly, but just like what you naturally gravitate towards with your sleep patterns. So that was eye opening for me, super highly suggest looking into the chronotype quiz and maybe even reading the power of when is very interesting. Now let's move on. Another huge hack is sunlight. Okay. And what you want to pay attention to is getting sun on your eyes I learned this from Andrew Huberman. This is a, a big factor because um, we're, you know, our ancestors, we're used to getting sunlight early on in the day, like seeing sunlight. Now, nowadays, we all live inside completely for the most part. And, you know, we're, we're just shut inside with no sunlight. So we don't get these positive effects from the sunlight. But what you want to do is get the sunlight on your eyes early on in the day. And this helps your natural circadian rhythm. So it helps your natural sleep patterns. All right. So get sunlight on your eyes early in the day, late at night. You want to shut that off. You want to get no light, no sunlight, no artificial light. You want to like be in a dark room. Okay. So one thing that I've done to help with this is I've gotten a blackout curtain in my room because I had a big window in there. It's, you know, there'd be car lights, you know, street lights coming in, you know, it's just not super dark but you can get this on Amazon. It's literally blackout curtains to shirt sort search blackout curtains on Amazon. And it's going to completely black out your room. Like my room is pitch black when I'm going to sleep now and it helps me sleep a whole lot better. All right. So blackout curtains are a game changer. Get some sunlight on your eyes early on in the day when the sun's coming out. I've got my big window right here, right next to my workspace. I'll literally, as I'm drinking water, you know, starting to drink my coffee for the day, uh, I'm making a point of it to, to look out this window and get that sunlight on my eyes to get my natural sleep patterns, my natural circadian rhythm going in the right direction. All right. So that's a big one. Sunlight, make sure to be paying attention to that. Now, this is a huge one. And I've talked about this before, but regulate your sleep schedule. All right. This is one I'm sure you've heard this before, but this is like one of the biggest things that helped me get better sleep. And it's regulating your sleep schedule, whether it's the weekday or the weekend. Because I was someone, you know, during the week, I'd be waking up super early, you know, forcing myself to try to wake up at 5 a.m. Like I told you guys, going to sleep, you know, trying to go to sleep pretty early, but still not getting the best sleep, you know, probably going to sleep close to like 11, 12 PM. So like getting maybe five, six hours of sleep. And then during the weekend, it'd be completely different. I'd be going to sleep one, two, 3 AM sleeping the next day till like noon. Right. So it was just all over the place. It made it so much harder to get back into a regular schedule during the week. So if you can regulate that as much as you can, now I pretty much go to sleep at the same times and wake up at the same times every single day, whether it's a weekday or the weekend. All right, so regulate that as much as you can. It's going to make a huge difference to your sleep. And it's going to make it a lot easier during the week to stay on, on a schedule when it's just the schedule you always stick to. All right, so regulate your sleep schedule. Now, this is really cool. I've gotten a whoop recently and uh, I've, found some findings. I'm going to share them with you. If you've had a whoop, you know, you've probably figured some of this stuff out for yourself. If you don't have a whoop, you don't necessarily need one. I kind of got it to, to learn these data points for myself and kind of figure out how, what things I could learn through, through tracking my sleep. Uh, and I think it's been super helpful and I'll, you know, I'm going to have it probably for a while just to, just to know and kind of see more data on my sleep. 
But some of my main findings I'm going to share with you guys is one, I've learned that I have to stay in bed. Like I've got to be in bed for a total of an extra hour to get the hour of sleep, the hours of sleep that I want to get. Right. So if I'm trying to get eight hours of sleep, I actually have to be in bed for like nine hours. So it's not just about being in bed. Like I, I think a lot of people think that way where they think um, I was in bed for nine hours of sleep, like nine hours last night, I got nine hours of sleep. It's not necessarily the case. You know, I usually have to be in bed for an extra hour to get the hours of sleep that I actually want to get. Okay. So it's pretty important to, to take into account with that. <clears throat> Another thing I've figured out is I usually have to get an almost an extra hour, you know, somewhere between like an extra 30 minutes to an hour um, of sleep when I have really intense workout days. So I've noticed like the recovery I need to get because it tells you like how much you need to recover depending on the activity you're doing throughout the day. If I have really intense workouts compared to like if it's just a cardio or rest day, then I need more recovery. And I didn't realize how much more I needed to sleep to recover from stuff like that. It's almost like the harder you work, the harder you need to recover. Like the, the <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's something you need to pay attention to. If you're working really hard, working out really hard, because I've also noticed on weekends, I don't need as much sleep when I'm not working as much. Um, so it, not only like cognitive, I'm not only physically, but cognitively, you know, if you're just working really hard, make sure you're recovering really hard as well. All right. So that's a big one. Um, trying to think of other things with the whoop. Um, you know, it's been just interesting seeing the stress monitor, just, you know, seeing how much stress affects my sleep as well. I've noticed on, you know, really relaxing days, I sleep really good, which is almost counterintuitive to me. I would actually think that on days where I'm super stressed out, working really hard, that I would sleep better because I'm so exhausted, but it's actually the opposite. So that's pretty interesting. Other than that, you know, whoop has been an a cool tool. I liked it. I would recommend it. Um, you don't necessarily need it. You know, you can just kind of like understand some of those findings that I shared with you. But, you know, if you're someone that wants to really track your, and dial down your sleep, dial it in, then I would recommend it. It's been pretty helpful. So some other hacks. Uh, I already talked about the blackout curtains. That's a huge one. Search that on Amazon. Get yourself a blackout curtain if you have a big if you have a big window in your bedroom, it's going to make a huge difference. Like it's pitch black in there when you get the blackout curtains. So highly recommend that. I've actually tried mouth tape. I tried it for like a month. I gave it a shot. There were some nights. So the, the benefit of mouth tape, and this is why I got it and why I got into it. Also from Andrew Huberman, Huberman he talked about this a lot. Breathing through your nose is much better for your health than breathing through your mouth and it's better for your sleep. So that's why I tried the mouth tape. So I, I gave it a shot. I tried to do the mouth tape thing. Um, I'm just someone, some days I get congested. Okay. And I've noticed like with the mouth tape, it literally woke me up in the middle of the night certain times. And it's like, okay, well, if I'm trying to improve my sleep by breathing through my nose, but this using this mouth tape is waking me up in the middle of the night on some nights. It's not doing what I want it to do. Okay. So I, I scrapped the mouth tape. It's just not for me. Um, I can see the benefits, you know, I, now I just try to consciously think about breathing through my nose because it is a big factor. Okay. That, that's a big factor in your health and your sleep, actually, believe it or not. So breathing through your nose is important. So just be, you know, you can try the mouth tape for yourself. If you're not someone that gets super congested and you can breathe through your nose all night, <clears throat> then I would recommend it. I would recommend at least trying it. Give yourself, you know, experiment with it. Give it, give it a shot. <clears throat> but with the mouth tape, it's not for me, but I've tried to just consciously throughout the day and in my sleep, think about um, just keeping my mouth closed and breathing through my nose. So um, just something to take into consideration. One thing that has worked really well for me um, that, I, that I was recommended was a weighted blanket. Now, a weighted blanket, it keeps you in one spot. So if you're someone that tosses and turns in the middle of the night, then I think this is something, it's like a must have, all right? They're usually like anywhere from 25 to 50 pounds. Mine's a 25 pounder. I didn't think I needed one that's like super heavy, uh, but it's really nice. And the thing to take into consideration with this, if you are like a hot sleeper, 
you're probably going to have to maybe turn down your AC one or two degrees extra um, because you will get a little bit warmer having a weighted blanket on you. Um, But I'm someone like I love sleeping in the cold and I love actually bundling up more. So I keep my place like 68, sometimes 67 degrees. Keep it pretty cold. Have that weighted blanket on me. I sleep like a dang baby. Super nice. The weighted blanket's a game changer as well. All right. So those are some of the the hacks that I've learned pretty recently. Now that's a pretty deep dive into everything that I've learned over the past, you know, year to two years where I've really improved my sleep. Finally, (laughs) if you put this stuff into practice, guys, I guarantee you your sleep will improve. Now I've, I've talked about even more habits. You know, I've talked about also how alcohol uh, affects your sleep and things like that. So if you want to learn more about sleep habits, check out my caffeine video, check out my past sleep video, and then just let me know um, if you have any other questions when it comes to sleep. All right. This is something I feel like I'm in a really good position to help people with because like my own fitness journey where, you know, I was able to take control of my fitness um, and help other people either put on muscle or lose weight because I've done that for myself. Uh, on the sleep side of things, I'm someone that was terrible at sleeping <laughs> and now I sleep really well. I'm a good sleeper, right? So so if you have questions, if you struggle with sleep, reach out to me, let me know. Um, other than that, guys, uh, watch those old videos. Make sure to like this video if it was helpful for you. Subscribe for both helpful informational content like this and expert guests coming on the podcast every single week. All right. So make sure to smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, put this stuff into practice right away. You know, elevate every day is, is not about just listening. It's about, you know, active listening and then putting it into action right away. All right. You can't do, you can't make changes if you don't put this into action. All right. So Put this right into action, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, elevate every damn day. Love you guys. Peace.